Hey everyone, what's up? It's Rob Dodson. Welcome back to Polycast. Recently, a few of you have left some comments asking if I could do an episode on the neon animation elements. Now, since we did an episode previously on behaviors, I thought now would be a great time to dive into the animation stuff. So come on down to Tablet Town and let's get hacking. So yeah, neon animations. What exactly are these things? Well, neon animations are a collection of behaviors and elements that let you use web animations. And if you've never heard of web animations before, it's basically a new set of standards that unify CSS and JavaScript animations. So you can write your animation in JavaScript and do something that's really programmatic and awesome, but have it run on the GPU like it was a CSS animation. So this lets you turn your kind of boring sign-in form or whatever into this crazy, awesome, bouncy thing. And I realize that's sort of over the top, but whatever, you get the point. OK, so today what we're going to do is we're going to focus on the behaviors in the Neon Animation set. And then in another episode, I'm going to do a follow-up and cover the elements like Neon Animated Pages. If you're not sure what behaviors are, you can check out this video right here and get caught up on behaviors so you can learn how they work. And then once you've seen that, come back and, and check out this video. OK, so the beha behaviors we're going to work on today uh, are the Neon Animatable behavior and the Neon Animation Runner behavior. So the Neon Animatable behavior, what this does is it allows you to add animations to your elements. So you can add like a, like a fade in animation or a scale up animation, lots of really cool stuff there. But what this doesn't do is it doesn't allow you to actually play those animations. There's no playback built into this thing. So for playback support, that's when you need the neon animation runner behavior. So that gives us playback. Now, what's really cool about the neon animation runner behavior is it actually implements this animatable behavior as well. So you know, for the elements that we're going to be building today, the only behavior that we need to work with is Neon Animation Runner, which is awesome. Now, you might wonder, like, why does this behavior exist even? Well, Neon Animatable is going to become more important when we go and we look at the animated pages elements in that following episode. But today, we're just going to work on Neon Animation Runner. So the thing that we're going to build is this little sort of pop-up sign-up form thing. So you can see here, I click this Open button, it animates in. I click Close button, it fades out. Now, I realize there's already a paper dialog element. And if you're building a sign-in form, you should absolutely 100% use the paper dialog element. Uh, I created my own one just as a teaching aid because it's going to help us really illustrate a lot of the concepts in the Neon Animation set. But by all means, if you're actually building a sign-in form, go use paper dialog. OK, so for my element, uh, here's the Bower JSON for it. My element is called login panel. And the interesting thing here is just to scroll down and check out its dependencies. You can see I'm importing paper elements 1.0 and neon elements 1.0. And I'm often pretty lazy. I'll import like the entire paper and neon element sets when I'm developing. Because you know, from, from my perspective, uh, it doesn't really matter if you pull all these sets into your development environment. Your file size, what you actually ship into production, is only what you import and only what you vulcanize. So I'm often lazy. I'll pull in the full sets just so I can uh, have an easier time developing. Now, inside of my editor, uh, this is the definition for my login panel element. You can see that we've got some styles here. The one to note is that on the host element, we've set display none by default, so you just can't see the thing initially. Uh, and then you know, scrolling around, you can see the template. It's pretty vanilla um, polymer. We've got paper material element, which is going to give us a little card. And we've got some paper inputs for the sign-in form. And then further down, you've got the actual definition for the element down here in JavaScript. So pretty typical stuff. You know, I've, I've called it login panel. It's got one property right now, this opened Boolean. And then I've got these two methods, show and hide. And you know, what these are going to do is just change the display style from inline block to none, depending on if it's showing or hiding. So right now, if you just call these methods, the element's just going to like blink on screen and then disappear really, really quickly. But I want this thing to animate, right? I want it to add a little, a little pizzazz. So to do that, I'll go back up to the top of the element. And I'm going to add imports for some animations. Now, the cool thing is the Neon Animation set actually comes with a few prefab animations that you can just drop in. So I'm going to pull in a scale up animation, a fade out animation, and then I'm also going to pull in that animation runner behavior. So check out these file paths right here. Just 
because I want you to see this. So uh, everything is coming from the Neon Animation package. And then I've got this animations directory. This is where the prefab animations hang out. And then uh, also a Neon Animation package, I'm just pulling in that behavior. Okay, So we're all set up there. And now I'm ready to scroll down, and I can add the behavior to my elements definition. So in my behaviors array, I'll add Neon Animation Runner behavior. And what that's going to do is it's going to give me access to this animation config property. So remember, the way that behaviors work is they mix in properties and methods into your elements. So by adding that behavior, I now have access to this really cool animation config thing. And this is where I can set up all of the animations on my element. So to do this, I'm going to return an object. And every key inside of this object is going to be the name of an animation that I want to run. So I'm going to create one called entry. And the values for this uh, entry object, the name, is going to be the name of the animation it should execute, which is that scale up animation that we imported. And then the node, this is the target of the animation. So in this case, we're saying, I want this element to animate itself. So I'm just passing this. But you know, if there were children inside of here that you wanted to animate, you could use something like um, Polymer's automatic node finding. You could be like, I want this dot dollar sign dot you know some some child to be the target. I want that thing to animate instead. But in this case, we're just saying, hey, animate animate myself, right? With this entry animation, and then we can also create an exit animation. So this time, I'm going to call fade out for that exit animation, and then I'm going to go down here into the show and high methods and add two calls to play animation. So remember, I said the animatable behavior. That's what lets us actually add animations to an element. And then the animation runner behavior, that's what gives us playback support. So that's where these methods come from. Um, and again, we're just calling the named animations that we just created up there. One thing that you might notice if you're, if you're astute and you're sort of paying attention here is that right here inside of hide, we're setting display to none before we execute the animation. So that means that this thing would just blink off screen and we would never see it. So we can take this out, right? We can actually remove that line there. I'll remove it with a little comment. Uh, but we're going to need to revisit this in just a bit, and I'll show you why. But first, let's, let's preview our element. So uh, over here, when, when I click this Open button, it's going to call that Show method. When I click this Close button, it's going to call the Hide method. So I click Open, animates in with Scale Up. Then I click Close, and watch what's going to happen. It fades out. But then it sort of pops back to the, to the state it was in before. So what's going on there? Well, web animations don't actually preserve changes that you make to the, the state of your element. So if you're changing the CSS properties or something like that, there's, uh, there's, there's no preservation. At first, I was like, well, that sort of sucks. Like, I kind of wish it did preserve those changes. But then I realized that would be potentially very difficult to debug. If you had a, a complex animation that was applying lots of different styles and properties to an element, it'd be very hard later to figure out, like, when did that thing you know, change its size or whatever? So web animation says, hey, that's going to be up to you. You're going to need to preserve whatever state changes you do. And you can do that by adding a class or just manipulating uh, the style property like we were doing. So how do we do that? Well, back in our elements definition, I'm going to add a listeners object. And if you've never worked with the listeners object before, it's really useful. Now, this is something that all Polymer elements get. And the listeners object is basically shorthand for add event listener. So we're going to say, hey, I want to create a listener for the neon animation finish event. And I want it to call this on neon animation finish method, which I'm going to define uh, down here below. So when the element is done animating, call this method. And inside of this method, uh, we're going to check to see if it's opened or not. And if it's not open, we'll tell it to display none. Right. So now we can go back and we can uh, check our animation out. So click the Open button, and it animates as it was before. And now when we click Close, that state gets preserved. Awesome. So what if you want to add multiple animations to your element that all kind of play at the same time? Well, that's actually really easy to do. And I can show you how to do it over here. But first, let's import a few more animations to work with. So I'm going to pull in a, uh, a fade in animation. And I'm also going to pull in one called slide down. And down in my, uh, my animation config object, instead of just having a single entry object here, I can actually have an array. So I can have an array of animation objects that I would like to play. And you can see here that I've set the first one 
name uh, the, the animation name to slide down animation, and then the second one, fade in animation. And these two animations are going to play in parallel. So they're both going to be happening at the same time. So uh, let's go preview that over in Chrome just to see what that does. So I'm going to click the Open button, and you'll see it sort of slides down and animates at the same time. So it fades in and slides down both at the same time. Cool. But what if you wanted to sort of change the timing of that, right? Maybe you want your animations to play sequentially, or you want them to be offset slightly. Well, that's really easy to do as well. So every animation object also has an optional timing object that you can give it. And the timing object has a few properties that you can work with. You could set duration. So I'm going to say that the slide down animation should have a duration of 2,000 milliseconds, so two seconds. And my fade in animation should have a duration of 1,000, so one, one second and a delay of 1,000. So it's going to wait one second before it starts playing. And then it's going to only be a second long, so it'll end at the same time as the slide down animation. And you can use delay to have your animations play kind of like one right after the other. Or if you want things to be sort of like offset, just kind of like uh, on top of one another, you can do that as well. And what this is going to do is it's really going to change the feel of this animation. So, so watch this and kind of compare it to what we were doing before. Now when I click Open, it's a much more gradual, kind of smoother transition that we see there, because it doesn't even start fading in until it's about halfway through the slide down animation. So just by changing those little properties, we were able to really alter the feel of that animation, which is pretty cool. OK, uh, now how would you go about writing your own animation? Because it might seem really daunting, but it's actually super easy. And what I usually do is I look at one of the animations that's already in the, the prefab animation set, and then I'll use that as a starting point. So this is the definition for the fade in animation. And if we scroll around here, you can see that it looks a lot like any other Polymer element. There's some documentation for the options that it supports. And we go down and we look at its definition, and you can see that you know, it's, it's just got an is property here for its name. It implements this neon animation behavior. We haven't talked about that yet, but that's, that's the behavior you need to implement if you're, you're creating your own animation. And then it has this config function. And this is really the, the meat of the animation here. And it's really not that complex. You can see that the node that it's targeting is whatever node we passed in in our configuration. And it creates what's called a keyframe effect. And this right here, this is the Web Animations API um, at work. So we're creating a keyframe effect object. We're telling it which node to target. And then we pass it this array of keyframes that are written out in JavaScript. And here we're just saying you know, we want it to go from 0 to 1 in terms of opacity. And we also pass in the, the timing stuff. So this is pretty easy. You could, you could quickly see how you could just kind of mimic this and implement your own animation. And that's exactly what I did. I created a bounce in animation. So we're going to create kind of like a bouncing effect. And I took that scale up animation we were working with before. I just copied it and pasted it in here. Um, you can see that it's got pretty similar options to the thing we were just working with. Uh, really, the only difference is this transform origin uh, configuration thing here, which just lets us set the, the origin point we'll be scaling from. But then everything else is the same. And what I did was I, I added all these different keyframes along the way. So start at scale 0, work up to scale 1. And then here are the keyframes sort of interstitially uh, for getting too big and too small and too big and too small until you have what looks like kind of a, a cool bouncing effect. So really, this is, this is all there is to it. Um, and if you want, you can also, like, I believe, mix in other things here. So you could have like transform and opacity and like a few other things running at the same time. Uh, but what, what this gives us is the ability to go over to our animation config object. We can replace our entry animation with that bounce in animation. And then we can import its definition. And with that in place, we're all good. We can just go and. Uh, click the Open button, and now you'll see we get this kind of frantic bounce in effect, which is a little crazy. Um, so we go back, we add some timing to this thing, we stretch out the duration a little bit, and now when we play it, it's a much more digestible animation. It's a little bit smoother. Now, uh, right now, these keyframes that I showed you, these are all being evenly distributed across the, the life cycle or the duration of that animation. So they all take the exact same amount of time, which is not really how animation works. Oftentimes, you want some parts to be longer and some parts to be shorter. And so if you want to do that, it's also very easy. You can just add offsets to your keyframe animations. And so you can see here that I'm offsetting from 0, and we're going to go all the way up to 1. 
So you can think about this at like you know 0% of your animation duration to 100% of your animation duration. And this is the, the amount of time that should go on between each of these. So from, um, from 0 to basically 80% through the, the lifespan of the animation, I want to spend all of that time just scaling up to 1.5, just doing this initial sort of keyframe tween here. And then I want the other 20% of my animation to just be occurring with that, like with the, the bouncing bits at the very end. So it'll be a, a long scale up, and then it'll bounce really, really um, fast all at the end there. So if we go and we preview this, you'll see now that it's a, a longer scale up, and we get more of that bounce at the end. So pretty cool, pretty easy way to, to really dial in the look and feel of your animation so you get exactly uh, what you want. The last thing I want to mention, as I was recording this, I came across a little bug in the, uh, the animation system. So watch here. I'm going to click the Open button. I'm going to play my animation. And I'm going to click this Close button. And I'm going to click the Close button twice. And now when I click Open again, I no longer see my animation. So what's up there? Well, there seems to be a bug where if your animations stack, it can break, which means it is time to bust out our old friend, the Sweet Hacks. Yeah, it's been a little while since we saw them, but, but now they're back. Um, what I'm going to do is, in my handlers, I'm going to add a call to this cancel animation method. So when I call cancel animation, it just throws out what other animation was already playing. And now when I click open, it bounces. I double click close, closes, click open, and it works again. We're back on track. So I realize it's kind of an annoying bug, but I wanted to include that little pro tip for you in case anyone else runs into that issue. All right, wow, we covered a ton of stuff today. And I got to admit, when I started this, I didn't actually know a lot about the animation system. So it's been really cool for me to learn, and I hope you all enjoyed it as well. Now I'm going to do a follow-up episode on the animated pages element. So click that little subscribe button so you don't miss that. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Hey there, Polycasters. Rob here, Q&A time. Uh, Alex Shaw writes in and asks, what is one quick tip you'd give someone who's moving from Polymer 05 to Polymer 1.0? So good question, Alex. Uh, recently, one of the members of the Polymer team wrote this really, really cool module called PolyUp. And it will actually take your old Polymer 05 code and do crazy machinations to it and spit out Polymer 1.0 code. It is, it is really awesome. So you can follow this link right here to check out the PolyUp website. There's a little uh, uh, REPL where you can drop your code in, and it'll just automatically convert it. And there's also an NPM module that you can install and just sort of run it from your command line. So really cool stuff there. Uh, again, thank you, Alex, for, for sending in a question. We'll have our minions reach out to you and, and send you a swag pack. If you have questions, uh, be sure to leave them down in the comments, and we just might feature you on a future episode of Polycast. So thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.